I've been using the Google Pixel 3 XL for the past five days, and I have a ton of thoughts on it. So aside from the giant notch and the major fake out that Google played on us at the announcement, uh, this has been a really, really pleasant experience. This is shot on the Pixel camera, so that's a fun way to start this. But let's dive right into my experience with the Google Pixel 3. Okay, starting with the major elephant in the room, the Google Pixel 3 XL just has a massive notch. It's like just it's a really really deep notch. So my first thought was number one is this a deal breaker? It's not. Number two, why do they do this? What benefit does having a deeper notch give this phone? And it gives it a couple benefits. So I'm going to talk about those later in this video, but I just want to acknowledge it. Yes, I see the notch. It's big. It's bad. But I still think that this phone is awesome and I'm willing to look past the notch. All right, so the notch packs two cameras and a full on speaker. So I feel like I'm kind of down for that. Over the last five days, it also has become a lot less prevalent to me. It definitely has not disappeared, but I don't notice it unless I'm thinking about it or consuming media on it. More on this later. The build this year looks very similar to last year's Pixel 2, but it feels a lot better. Last year, I felt like the back felt plasticky and kind of gave an overall cheap feel to the phone, but this year it has a soft touch glass feel and it just feels so nice and premium in the hand. I can't even really describe it. It doesn't feel like any other smartphone on the market, but it feels like so much better. Also, the curves and everything just fit really nicely in the hand and it's a really thin phone. It is a little bit slippery though because of the new finish, so I ended up using the Google Fabric case that they gave me at the event, and that definitely helped a lot while still keeping a really slim build. So that's definitely an option there for you. Going over like the actual build, the volume button and the power button are on the right side, which means that the left side is kind of bare. The SIM card tray is at the bottom, and I wanted to note that because at the top there's also a hole, which kind of looks like the SIM card hole, but it's not, do not put the ejector in there. What you will not find on this build is a headphone jack though, which is kind of a major bummer, but it does come with some pretty sweet USB Type-C headphones. There's still a two-tone theme, which I really dig on the back, and I love the accented power button. Also, the not pink color, which is like for sure pink, looks really hot, and I think it's a little weird that I'm calling a smartphone hot, but we're just gonna go with it. The smaller Pixel 3 does not have a notch, and it is a little bit more narrow, so it's definitely the easier phone to use in one hand. And I also feel like this is gonna be like the best compact phone of the year, just because Google did not water down any of the features. It's just purely a smaller version of the 3 XL. I'm really happy with the XL personally and I prefer more screen real estate, but I can see the three being a really tempting option. I feel like from here, it only makes sense to go right to talking about the screen. The model I have been testing all week is the XL, as I already said, so that's the one that I'm gonna be focusing on, but I did see the regular Pixel 3 at the event and the screen looks really sharp and nice as well. All right, so the XL. We've already mentioned the notch, but what I have not mentioned yet is the ability to shut it off. Buried deep into the developer settings is a way to hide the cutout, as Google is calling it, and it looks okay, but for the screen real estate that you lose, I just don't think it's worth it. I feel like Google knows that the notch doesn't look great, so they do their best to hide it, and they actually do a pretty good job everywhere, except when you're watching videos. Apps either don't use the notch as real estate for anything important, or if they do, it blends in really well. While watching videos, however, in landscape mode, I can't say the same thing. The video is kind of off-center, and once you see that, you cannot unsee it. I'm sorry if I just ruined that for you. And if you want to make it centered, the only option that you have is to zoom in and lose the edges of the content. When you do this, the notch also cuts into the video, so it's just not ideal. Luckily, the off-centered thing can easily be fixed with software, so I'm hoping that Google rolls something out. The actual display in here, though, is miles better than last year. Color shifting is so much better, and it just looks so sharp. Text looks really sharp also, and the colors look super accurate and pleasing. My only gripe with the display is that it does not get extremely bright in direct sunlight. You can definitely see it, but I really noticed this when I was trying to record the screen outside, and I know a lot of you guys are not gonna be recording the screen outside, but it definitely was something that I was like, hey, like in order to expose this background properly, everything is gonna be blown out but the screen. And it's just like a little dim. I would love if it went like just one more brightness level up, then it would be perfect. It's not a deal breaker and you can definitely still see it, but that's definitely a gripe that I have with the screen this year. All right, I literally cannot wait anymore. We need to talk about this camera. It's so good. With months left in the year, I still feel confident enough in the camera to say that it's gonna be in the top three cameras of the year regardless of other releases. Dynamic range, color, sharpness, focus, everything is spot on. Google has some of the best image computational skills and processing out there and it really shows. They stuck to the roots and kept one camera on the back and it's still so good. I really cannot praise it enough. I'm so hyped every time I talk about it. Let me run down a couple reasons why. Portrait mode has been improved again 
again with better edge detection and the ability to refocus after the fact on a different part of the image. The portrait selfie mode is also pretty good. Regular photos have excellent colors. These photos from when the sun was setting really show a lot of things I'm talking about. Dynamic range is just exceptional and sharpness is there. Also, the colors just really represent what I actually saw in the scene. Also, sometimes when I'm taking the photo like through the viewfinder, it looks like okay, but not great but then it gets processed and that all changes. So it really shows that Google's processing is what makes this camera so good. I also shoot a lot of the photos in HDR plus, so keep that in mind. It takes an extra second for the photo to uh, actually process and shoot, but it really makes all the difference. Another smart feature that this camera packs is called Top Shot. And basically what this means is that the phone captures motion before and after the shutter is clicked and then recommends key photos that look the best. So you can make sure that your eyes are not closed or exposure looks good or whatever it is. The uh, little like, advertisement that they showed at the event for this really showed how useful it is like if you're taking a photo and someone blinks or someone walks in front of the frame it's just really nice to have the flexibility to take other shots and a google rep that i was talking with at the events told me that they'll turn on hdr for the recommended photos that they think that you should use and i think that that's really useful as well and then it just saves it as a new copy so you still have access to the old photos another feature that's going to be really impressive that's not here yet is called night sight mode and i got a live demo at the event of this but I wasn't allowed to film it. But basically, um, Google has really good image processing for low light photos in this new um, mode. So you can take a photo and it will be pitch black, it will process it, and bam, it's like light. So they shut off all the lights, they had me sit down on a bed and they took a photo. And when they took it without night sight, I was like, this is not looking like a great photo. Uh, then they turned on night sight and it was like really, really well exposed. It looked like there was definitely a light on in the room. So if it turns out to be even half as good as that demo, it's going to be a really awesome feature. But even without that right now, low light performance on this phone is really excellent. Another software feature that really is going to help make this camera an all around awesome shooter is called Super Res Zoom. So basically one disadvantage of only having one lens on the back is having no telephoto camera for um, a different focal length which means that you can only use digital zoom if you want to move closer. But this mode uh, uses the movement of your hands when you're taking the photo to um, be able to zoom in and have it look like a high resolution zoom with the quality and the clarity there. It actually works pretty well and when I zoom in all the way, it still looks pretty sharp. Another thing that comes up with image processing is when Google notices that a photo might be underexposed or the lighting might be off, a little thing comes up at the bottom that says fix lighting and when you click that, it will show you what an edited version, like what they think the photo should look like and it works like 90% of the time really well. Unlike the camera situation on the back, on the front the Pixel 3 has two cameras. One regular camera and one super wide get all your friends in their camera. Google is calling this kind of photo a groupie, which is just like all kinds of cringe. If I ever say that, please say to me in the nicest way possible, what is wrong with you? Uh, but aside from the naming scheme, it actually works really well and the camera is extremely wide. You can get a bunch of people in your photos. We have a photo with like the YouTube squad and there's like maybe 15 of us in the photo and it looks really good. The sharpness is there for all of us. So I think that that's really impressive. And one of my biggest gripes with smartphone cameras is that they're just not wide enough. So this is really, really wide. Both front facing cameras produce sharp images with no skin smoothing and the portrait mode, as I've already mentioned, is pretty good as well. It sometimes struggles with edge detection, but overall it will give you a good enough photo, especially for a selfie. So overall the cameras are really good here and I would say that the camera quality of this phone is one of the major selling points for it. A lot of the new features are software based, but they are a lot of them Pixel 3 exclusive, which means that you are gonna need this phone to get access to them. I think what this really shows is that if you have a good quality sensor, but even better artificial intelligence and image processing skills, you're gonna have one of the best cameras on the market. If Google put their processing skills on a bunch of other cameras like the Note 9, for example, I can't even imagine the results. They've just gotten really, really good at detecting different things in an image like color and sharpness and exposure and working really well to make it the best quality image it can be. Diving into performance, this is the second major selling point of the phone. Pure Android Pie. Stock, clean, beautiful. You can obviously tell that that's my preference. Oh, it's so good. Everything is clean and snappy and there are so many small features built in that I would need like an entire separate video to cover all of them, but here are a few of my favorite features. Some of these might have been available on past Android versions, but I definitely have really noticed them this year and used them, so I'm just gonna tell you guys what I like. It's so hard to keep track of what came with what software update, so these are just the main things that I'm really digging with the software. The app drawer and multitasking section feel really easy and it just makes sense. Swipe gestures are definitely the way to go. I love that when I'm playing 
Kodak Music and Spotify, the album cover becomes my lock screen background. And I feel like this has been around for a while, but on this gorgeous screen, it looks really especially dope. And then just smaller things like Google Assistant and the fact that when the phone is wirelessly charging, yes, that is here this year, you can display Google Assistant stuff or photos. Google is also rolling out a feature soon where the assistant will answer calls for you so you don't have to deal with spam calls and it will give you a live transcription of what's being said. When that comes out, that's gonna be pretty sick. So aside from the software, which I can gush over all day, I think that overall performance is really impressive too. With only four gigabytes of RAM, I was a little apprehensive at first in terms of how well four gigabytes of RAM is gonna hold up over time. Only exactly that, time will tell. But so far, the phone has been nothing but smooth. Battery life is also pretty good on this phone. I'm getting about a day's use on my heavy use of social media and watching content and writing emails and stuff like that. When you do need to top it off though, it has fast charging and wireless charging, as I've already mentioned, with the new pad, which looks really clean. The phone will also make battery life predictions, which is kind of a software and battery thing, but basically um, it will tell you like how long it thinks you have left. So I was at like 10% at nine o'clock and it said to me, hey, your phone's only at 10%, you probably have until 10 p.m. And that was actually pretty accurate, so I think that that's a cool feature just to like kind of have estimates of how long your battery is going to last. Also, the phone has something called adaptive battery, which is definitely a software-based feature. And basically, Google says that it will learn which apps you use less often and limit battery life dedicated towards those, which is cool. I've only been using the phone for five days, so I don't really have enough time to test to see if the phone actually does that, but if it does do that, battery life should improve over time. So I'm definitely gonna keep you guys posted about that on Twitter. Smaller things that round out the phone's overall goodness is the new IP68 rating, which means that you will have to worry less in the rain, the vibration motor, which is now the best in any Android phone, and I really feel like Google knows it's the best in any Android phone because they find excuses to use it in most parts of the phone, but I'm definitely not complaining about that. It feels tight and controlled to the specific area of the phone, and it definitely gets your attention if it vibrates in your pocket. Typing with it feels great, and it means I have an easier time typing without looking, which is always a good thing. The phone also has front-firing speakers, which are 40% louder than last year, and they just sound so great. Equal, punchy, and loud is how I would describe them. They actually get so loud that when I'm listening to certain types of music and I'm holding the phone, I can feel them playing from the back of the phone, if that makes sense. So that's the Pixel 3 and 3XL. It's not the prettiest phone on the market, but it is the smartest phone on the market that packs one of the best cameras out there. A great sound system, fast charging, and clean, functional software. It's gonna be a phone that I use on a daily basis for those reasons. I definitely wanna hear what you think of the phone though, so definitely let me know in a comment down below, aside from all the notch city comments, which are kind of inevitable. Smash the like button if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe right here so you don't miss any other content. Check out my other content right here, and I'm gonna catch you guys very soon with another video. All right, thank you guys all so much for watching. Bye.